miles per hour. That's how fast the bullets were moving when they came out of the barrel of that AR-15 in Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School last week. 2,182 miles per hour, 3,200 feet per second. That's what those kids were trying to outrun. 3,200 feet per second. That's three times faster than the speed of a bullet <clears throat> leaving the barrel of a 9mm handgun. With a high-capacity magazine, the AR-15 can fire maybe 90 or 100 bullets in a minute. A concealable handgun can fire maybe 15 bullets in a minute. But President Trump said today that he believes if you put that concealable handgun in the hands of White House Chief of Staff John Kelly, he could have stopped the shooter in Florida last week. John Kelly could have gone into that school alone with no body armor and gone up against a mass murderer with an AR-15, and that would have been the end of it. John Kelly was in the room today when the president said that. Well, I'm watching John Kelly, General John Kelly. So he's a four-star Marine. He's a tough cookie. If he was a teacher of mine, I wouldn't mind having him have a gun, because I guarantee he can use it better than anybody. <laughs> There's no security guard you're going to hire that's going to handle a gun better than him. So if he's a teacher, and if other friends of his from the Marine, if they're teaching, or other people like that, I want them to have a gun. Well, that's certainly the kind of thing Clint Eastwood was doing in the movies when he was 67 years old going up against the bad guy with superior firepower and taking out his taking the guy out with his handgun the president has seen too many clint eastwood movies john kelly is 67 years old he has never gone into combat with only a handgun or commanded marines in combat armed only with handguns he has only commanded marines in combat who have weapons of war the finest weapons of war like the ar-15 John Kelly would never order a Marine into combat armed with only a handgun. John Kelly was never trained to go into combat in an American high school where the possible collateral damage included high school students, thousands of them, and dozens of American high school teachers. No Marine has ever been trained to do that, and no Marine has ever done it. But in Donald Trump's imagining of mass murder in an American school, all it takes to stop the shooter is a former Marine with a concealable handgun. And he seems convinced that former Marines and other military veterans have filled American teaching jobs. You have teachers that are Marines for 20 years, and they retire, they become a teacher. And they're uh, Army, Navy, Air Force, they're Coast Guard, they're people that have won shooting contests. No, that's not what people do when they retire from the military. No one appears to be keeping a close count of the number of Marines or other veterans who become school teachers, but it is a tiny, tiny percentage of teachers. It could be below 3%, possibly below or around 1% of teachers. Donald Trump seems to think it's 40%. They're not going to walk into a school if 20% of the teachers have guns. It may be 10% or maybe 40%. After I pointed out on this program last night that Donald Trump's original idea for having 20% of teachers have guns would mean 700,000 teachers in America carrying concealed handguns in the school, reporters in the White House press briefing today asked if the president's doubling of that figure to 40% meant that he really believed we would have 1,400,000 teachers with guns in American schools, which would be almost double the total number of American police officers. And of course, as usual in a White House press briefing, I will not spare you with how it went, there was no real answer to that question. I mean, I will spare you for how it went. After I pointed out on this program last night that the president had no intention of paying any of those teachers for doing double duty as police officers, the president suggested this today. What I'd recommend doing is the people that do carry, we give them a bonus. We give them a little bit of a bonus. They're, frankly, they'd feel more comfortable having the gun anyway, but you give them a little bit of a bonus little bit of a bonus. He's got a new idea every day. And so a reporter pointed out in the White House press briefing today, 
if the bonus was, say, $1,000 a piece for risking your life. That would cost somewhere between $700 million and a billion dollars. The reporter asked if the president was prepared to provide federal funding for that, and as usual, there was no real answer in the White House press briefing room because no one in the White House has really thought about this. But the president's own budget tells us what they think. It already provides for a cut in funding for school security. That's the Trump position. That's the Republican position. Cut funding for school security. They're already on record with that budget. On this subject and so many others, the president lives in a fantasy world and the people working in the White House seem to believe that their job is to never interrupt the fantasy. And that was really the most painful part of what we saw today in the White House. When the president looked across the table in the Roosevelt Room today and looked at 67-year-old John Kelly and told the world that if John Kelly had a handgun, at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas last week, the mass murderer would have been shot and killed on the spot, and John Kelly would have saved the lives of some of the children who were murdered that day. John Kelly had an obligation in that moment. John Kelly actually knows a lot about trying to stay alive when you're getting shot at and trying to kill the people who are shooting at you. And Donald Trump knows nothing about that. And so John Kelly had an obligation when Donald Trump mentioned that. Kellyanne Conway spoke up in the Roosevelt Room today and threw in her two cents about what's happening in American schools and what she had to say was worth less than two cents. But John Kelly sat there and he said nothing. John Kelly allowed himself to be used as a prop for Donald Trump's fantasy. John Kelly allowed his honorable years of service as a United States Marine to be used by a politician who is in lockstep with the National Rifle Association and is determined to make sure that American mass murderers continue to be able to buy assault weapons over the counter in America and remain the best equipped mass murderers in the world. John Kelly had a moral obligation today to the truth and a moral obligation to this country to tell the president right there in that room at that moment that it's not as easy as he imagines. John Kelly had a moral obligation to tell the president that it is grotesquely wrong to tell American parents that all we need to protect their children in our schools is a John Kelly with a handgun. The students of Stoneman Douglas High and students around the country and their parents want action, they want decisive action to prevent assault weapons, specifically assault weapons, from entering the schools and killing children and teachers. And the president offers them fantasies. He offers them imagined movie characters. He offers them an imagined army, almost twice the size of the total American police force, an army of teachers with handguns who will protect every student in America. We're never gonna have that army. And John Kelly, who knows that, who knows something about raising and training and maintaining armies, had a moral obligation to tell American parents and students the truth today, that that army is not coming, that the teacher with a handgun, very few of whom are former Marines, very, very few, that that teacher will be able to take out the mass murderer with the AR-15. It was John Kelly's job to tell the president the truth about that. The AR-15 was designed not just to fight gun battles, but to win gun battles. And it was designed to leave no wounded behind. It was designed to kill more effectively than other guns can. It was designed to destroy human organs with one bullet when other guns can't do that. Dr. Heather Schur is a radiologist and she was on duty when the victims started arriving at her hospital in Florida last week. Here are some of the clinical observations she made. In a typical handgun injury that I diagnosed almost daily, a bullet leaves a laceration through an organ, like the liver, to 
To a radiologist, it appears as a linear, thin, gray bullet track through the organ. There may be bleeding and some bullet fragments. I was looking at a CT scan of one of the victims of the shooting at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School, who had been brought to the trauma center during my call shift. The organ looked like an overripe melon smashed by a sledgehammer with extensive bleeding. How could a gunshot wound have caused this much damage? One of the trauma surgeons opened a young victim in the operating room and found only shreds of the organ that had been hit by a bullet from an AR-15, a semi-automatic rifle which delivers a devastatingly lethal, high-velocity bullet to the victim. There was nothing left to repair. The injury was fatal. Dr. Shear was also on duty a year ago when there was a mass shooting at Fort Lauderdale International Airport. Eleven people were hit by shots from a 9mm handgun. And here's what she said about those gunshot wounds. The gunshot wounds were the same low-velocity handgun injuries as those I diagnose every day, and all six of the victims who arrived at the hospital that day survived. The AR-15 is different. And that's what people who stood up to Senator Marco Rubio in Florida last night tried to get him to admit. The AR-15 is different. Dr. Scher wrote, the high-velocity bullets bullet causes a swath of tissue damage that extends several inches from its path. It does not have to actually hit an artery to damage it and cause catastrophic bleeding. A bullet from a handgun or other weapon can enter your body and pass through you without killing you, and a bullet from an AR-15 entering in exactly the same place and traveling the same track can kill you. AR-15s are different. They do catastrophic damage inside the human body that other weapons and ammunition are incapable of doing. Dr. Shear says exit wounds from an AR-15 can be the size of an orange. Doctors are parents, too. Dr. Shear told this story about the day of the shooting. One of my ER colleagues was waiting nervously for his own children outside the school while the shooting was still in progress. The first responders were gathering up victims whenever they could and carrying them outside the building, even as a physician trained in trauma situations, though, there was nothing he could do at the scene to help to save the victims who had been shot with an AR-15. Most of them died on the spot with no fighting chance at life. Banning the sale of AR-15s would have given those kids in Florida last week a fighting chance at life. Allowing the murderer to so easily and legally obtain an AR-15 gave those kids no fighting chance at life, no chance at all. And President Trump and Marco Rubio and every Republican Congress still wants to make sure that every mass murderer who can pass a background check, and most of them can, can legally buy an AR-15, which most of them do. We now live in a country where for some politicians, a fighting chance at life for kids in school, 